everybody has their own taste in music, even, it seems, Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad, when local poet and songwriter Ibrahim Kahush published lyrics that may have been suggestive of an opposition to the Assad regime, he was found the next morning with his vocal cords torn out. And this is emblematic of the autocratic power that Bashar al-Assad wields over his people that has landed his country in a civil war. The Council on Foreign Relations explains on May 17th of 2016 that what began as a series of protests against the Assad regime in 2011 has now resulted in the Syrian civil war, with Syria, backed by Russia and Iran, and pro-democracy rebels backed by a U.S.-led coalition and Turkey. The Council furthers that this conflict has resulted in the death of over half a million Syrians, as well as six million internally displaced people, and over four million Syrians who have fled their borders entirely. The Economist explains, however, on May 8th, that for Syria, there may just be a light at the end of the tunnel. A ceasefire in Aleppo has lasted since February 28th, Russian planes are drawing out of the Syrian airspace, and the international community is making leaps and bounds toward peace treaties in Syria. And thus, considering that Syria may finally be reaching the end of its civil war, it becomes imperative that we ask ourselves the question, will the end of the Syrian civil war result in a democratically elected government? And the answer is a lamentable no, because the Assad regime will long outlive the end of the Syrian civil war. More specifically, first, because it is backed by Russia. Second, because it breeds off terror. And finally, because it has destroyed Syria's democratic institutions. If Russia is a regional playground bully, Syria is the teacher's pet. And the first reason why the end of the Syrian civil war will not result in a democratically elected government is because the Assad regime is propped up by Russia. The Wall Street Journal explains on May 11th of 2016 that Vladimir Putin has done more for the Assad regime than any other regional or global actor. It furthers that Vladimir Putin realizes the geopolitical advantage it can garner from allying itself with Syria, and Syria sees the same. For Russia, it can use the small country as a bolster from Western interests entering the region, and for Syria, an alliance with Russia is an alliance with a geopolitical and economic superpower. And thus, as the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace explains on May 23rd of 2016, the Russia-Syrian alliance will continue as it has before, during, and now after the Syrian civil war. Vladimir Putin's alliance and favorable sentiments toward Syria will not die no matter the outcome of the civil war, and this is for two reasons. First, because of its geographical proximity to the country that the United States simply doesn't have, but second, because of the fact that Vladimir Putin will prop up Assad no matter what, even if the United States wins. A prominent example of this is the peace treaty signed on February 28th in Aleppo, Syria, where Vladimir Putin changed the verbiage of the U.S. treaty to make it more favorable for Assad. And thus, this alliance isn't going to die no matter what happens with the Syrian civil war. Terror has been a lamentable central tenet of the Middle East for centuries. With the decline of Al-Qaeda, we saw the rise in the Islamic State. And the second reason why the end of the Syrian civil war will not result in a democratically elected government is because the Assad regime is bolstered by terror. The New York Times explains on May 11th of 2016 that despite the fact that the Islamic State began in Syria, Bashar al-Assad has never formally declared a war on jihad and has in fact killed more of his own moderate citizens than terrorists itself. And this points to the central tenet of the Assad terror relation, which is the fact that he is cognizant of the fact that it only props up his regime. The Center for Strategic and International Studies explains on January 18th of 2016 that Bashar al-Assad's regime is strengthened by terror, specifically that of the Islamic State. And this is because as the international community, the United States, and other regional and global actors put their focus on fighting terror in the Middle East, rather than the dictators who foster terror themselves, they are only turning a blind eye to individuals such as Bashar al-Assad, allowing them to do things such as rig their parliament or use chemical warfare on their own people, while the international community is more focused on fighting terror than fighting true regional terrorists, the corrupt dictators themselves. In 2001, after the death of his father, 
Bashar al-Assad threatened his country's own parliament to decrease the age for presidency so that he could hold office. And the final reason why the end of the Syrian civil war will not result in a democratically elected government is because the Assad regime has destroyed the nation's democratic institutions. Looking back two years, we can see a prevalent example of this. The Brookings Institution explains in June of 2014 that after the Syrian people cried time and time again for a democratic election, the Assad regime gave this to them, but it was anything but democratic. It furthers that voting was only held in tightly government-controlled areas, and many phenomena such as ballot stuffing were seen, and furthers that Bashar al-Assad, a man who had used chemical weapons on his people three months before, got 90% of his country's vote, and thus the election was nothing but a farce. And as the Foundation for Defense of Democracies explains in a January of 2016 report, the Assad regime, since coming to power in the 1920s, has done more to damage Syria's dem democracy than can be fixed. It furthers that even a democratic vote in Syria cannot be held, and that the idea that dictatorship is the only way is institutionalized in the minds of the Syrian people. And thus, the Foundation furthers that even if a democratic election were to be brought about, by an outside actor, it would not be possible in the near future because of the decades of damage that are irreversible caused to Syria's democratic institutions by the Assad regime. And thus, to readdress the question, will the end of the Syrian civil war result in a democratically elected government? The answer is a resounding no, because the Assad regime will long outlast the end of the Syrian civil war, more specifically first, because it is backed by Russia. Second because it is propped up by terror, and finally, because it has destroyed Syria's democratic institutions. So while Ibrahim Kahush may have lost his life for doing nothing more than speaking out against a corrupt dictator, he may not be an isolated case.